Don Peoples did, but let's talk about it. So we got to get into all the rumbling and grumbling that's going on around my man Ice Cube and the cast members of Friday not being too happy about the pay that they receive for doing the project. Now, I know it's 26 years later, but this was a iconic movie. Obviously, it's one of the best in our urban history um, in anybody's top five, probably of all time. So we OQ for that. Looking at the whole picture, though, why are the cast members upset 26 years later when discussing Friday and why they didn't want to, you know, go back in and do sequels and stuff of that nature? Now, Cube had obviously felt that he needed to speak on some things and obviously he addressed a few different people um, when asked. Now, when it comes to Chris Tucker, now we all know Smokey, man. Like, you know, he made the Friday, to be honest. Like, I think with no Smokey, you never would have had Friday. So we owe Chris Tucker for that. But we all felt like afterwards, yo, did Chris Tucker get the big head and want to leave us behind to do things like Fifth Element when he got to be in a dress or, you know, get with Jackie Chan and do another rush hour, you know, where he was on big things. So maybe he didn't want to, you know, scoop down and do no Fridays anymore. But my whole thing with it was, with Chris especially, is that role obviously is a role that, you know, you got to play the idiot pretty much, the, the get high nigga. You know, that's that's really what your whole character was portraying. So, you know, when when you see the, you know, the tweets come out when he's talking about that, you know, Chris Tucker, you know, wanted to, you know, stop for religious reasons and stuff like that. And, you know, he was offered 10 to 12 million. I understand 10 to 12 million at that time was a lot of change for real. So for him to be offered that amount of money, that's a good amount. But I think he had other roles obviously like we said he wanted to focus on you know diversify his portfolio you know but i think at the time that's what it was about it wasn't about doing another friday even though it was popular amongst blacks and urban culture right but usually once you get popular amongst our culture you want to spread your wings and you know go off into other genres and, and touch another audience. And that's what he was able to do by the smoky character from Friday. That got everybody loving Chris. Everybody was fucking Chris. You know what I mean? Like that was it for us. You know, everybody loves Smokey. So, you know, I think Chris just wasn't never about to be back on that time. No amount of money probably could have made him come back because I think, from him going from, you know, under a million dollars, 250000 probably, you know, he probably got a little bit more on the back end probably than everybody else. But, um, you know, to get such a small amount of change and then jump all the way up to 10 to $12 million, that's that's saying a lot. But they just didn't want to budge. But, you know, I think a lot of these other cast members, man, for real, are just being totally ungrateful. You know, now I feel like if Chris didn't step to the side, you never would have even got to see Mike Epps because Mike Epps was made from Friday. Now, obviously all about the Benjamins and, you know, different movies came later. But next Friday is what birthed Mike and without Friday and your boy Chris Tucker leaving. I don't think Mike Epps never gets his shot. So we never would have known Mike Epps. And I think Mike Epps did a great job of carrying the Friday series um, by doing the next Friday. 
So we got to keep that in mind, too. So I know Mike Epps is internally grateful to Ice Cube for that, you know, giving him his break and, you know, his chance in the industry. You know what I mean? But like I said, some people are just totally ungrateful. Big worm, big perm. Like, you know, at the end of the day, Faison, it wouldn't have been no you without Cube, man. And you know this. It makes no sense for you to come out, man, and try to say that, oh, you didn't know you was filming an iconic movie at the moment. Yeah, nobody knows what they're doing at the moment. But later on is when you see the appreciation. And then when you look at your career and some of the things you were able to do, it came from you being Big Worm. I mean, Big Perm. Like, this is what it came from. It didn't come from you just being a hellified actor. You know, we all know you from this. So, understandably, you only got 2500 for doing the film, but you got a lifetime of opportunities. You know, so for you to, you know, turn down, you know, a second chance to appear in Friday, obviously for Mo Pay, because you felt slighted after the first one, I just think, man, that just shows that you're really ungrateful about the situation and not really respecting the type of time Cube had you on. Like, nobody knew who you were, so for you to now be a, a cult classic, people come up to you to this day and associate you with this character, it makes no sense to me why you would try to blast this information because it doesn't help you with his relations and you going forward, you know? not wanting to do the second role, knowing you was going to get more money to try to spite. It's just, you know, I feel like that was petty. You know, I feel like Q really put you in position with that role, you know, gave you a, a good speaking role. You know, you, you was the gangster in the movie. You know, it's, it's just, it was a lot that went with that. You know, so, you know, when I see Cube having to really, you know, defend himself you know from these type of allegations it's crazy when friday really birthed these dudes and you know shout out to michael blackston you know michael blackston explained it and i think he exposed it best there's an actor scale the film industry pay scale you know he said he got paid eight hundred dollars twelve hundred dollars total for ot that's what the ot included you feel what i'm saying for doing his role you know but that role turned him into the biggest African comic in the world. And that's where the appreciation comes in at. See, you know, at the time, it was Michael Blackson, Michael Blackson? No, look at my man. He looks totally different. You know, and this is what birthed him. This is what gave him his iconic, I can't get jiggy with this shit. Like, all this came from this, you know? So he understood that, you know, that small pay and not getting, you know, a hell of a lot of money. But if you probably would have asked him what he had did it for free then, he probably would have. And look what it turned him into. So I think a lot of the people who are jealous and who might be mad are just mad because their careers did not turn out the way that they want it. Not saying Face on Love didn't have a good run and didn't play in some good movies, but let's just keep it a bean. This Friday at the time, as we have the numbers put up here, you can see that it, it's not something to just gross hundreds of millions of dollars out the gate. You know what I'm saying? Like, it did good for its time, and obviously with the budget that it had, which was like, you know, 35, you know, 3.5 million. So, you know, it was a situation to where even when it first came out, you know, it doubled the bread, but it didn't blow it out the water. It didn't start picking up until, you know, as it, as it went along. And then obviously DVDs and, you know, all that really crushed the game. So... The royalty money off of it is stupid. And I really think a lot of them is just salty about that. Because as they got people, you know, talking about it 
over the years and being defined by these certain characters and to not really get no back end off of it, I can understand why you would be upset. You know, I can understand why you feel frustrated or you feel like, damn, like, you know, I should have really seen it, but you should have had the foresight. But like Cube said, y'all could have said no. And they probably would have found somebody else and then they would have had that fame. So I think y'all was in a no-win situation. You didn't know if this was going to pop off, right? And when it did pop off, it did what it did because it turned all you guys into stars, household names within the community. You feel me? And you all seen opportunity from this. So it's like you can't really come at Cube and feel like Cube did y'all dirty. Of course, Cube probably got the most of the bread and he understood contracts and all that type of stuff, you know, from his NWA days. So he already knew, like, probably to make sure that he had royalties and, and you know, all that for the for the future. But he had a lot to do. Obviously, the production, that's his film. So um, I think if y'all would have been smart enough at the time or had lawyers in place, then it would have been a situation to where y'all could have capitalized off the back end because that's what y'all really mad about. Just how the movie just keeps selling and people keep streaming it, buying it, you know, all that. And you're not seeing the back end off of it. You know, money is slowed up, obviously, you know, and you're not seeing it. And I even think with Chris Tucker, I think, you know, he regrets it. Looking back on it, that he didn't do another Friday. You know, um, I think it doesn't make sense now unless he just appeared in it like on some uh, uncle type shit, you know. But I really don't think that it's, uh, you know, something that he can even do now. You know, it's like one of those moments that came and gone. And I think he just has to live with it. Um, but I think he regrets not doing another Friday. And I think, you know, Q would have loved to probably had all of the main cats together. You know what I'm saying? As far as. Him, Smokey, Day Day, Pinky, you know what I'm saying? Uh, who else am I missing? My man, Cat Williams. Um, you know, just just all of them, just all in one Friday. And I think it would have been epic to have everybody, including Debo, you know, God bless the dead. Uh, you know, Witherspoon. It's just so many of them, man, that you can kind of think of, man, that were made off of Friday. And we really owe that to Q, man. Q really put a gem in the community. You know what I'm saying? As far as film goes. And I think a lot of the cast members need to be grateful for the position that he put them in. But I want y'all to get in the comment box, man, and let me know what y'all think. Do y'all feel like the cast members have a right to be mad at Q for the low pay and no royalties 26 years later with the Friday movie? Or... Do you feel like that they should be appreciative of the opportunities that was created by Cube and, you know, getting them involved in the Friday movie that became a cult classic? I want to hear what y'all think, though, man. Y'all like, subscribe, share, hit the notification tab, man, so y'all can tap in every time I drop a video. It's your boy, Don Peoples. Dead boat. Go.